so my external presentation uh, came from the necessity uh, to uh, know in advance uh, which kind of uh, MS patient will have the the worst prognosis in terms of cognitive uh, abilities. So we we conducted this study at the University of Verona uh, and um, aiming at uh, investigating the predictive role of uh, of cortical lesion and diagnosis with reference to cognitive impairment uh, after 20 years of uh, of multiple sclerosis course because we believe that it is extremely important to have to find some biomarkers that will Will, 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 uh, will work as uh, red flags in order to identify which kind of patient will, uh, will have the worst prognosis. So um, we already know that uh, cortical lesion at diagnosis uh, are already, already, pre already present. They are one of the hallmark of, uh, of MS course, uh, sometimes with an uh, even higher prevalence that, uh, than white matter lesions. Uh, cortical lesions reflect the brain damage uh, and they are associated with the clinical and cognitive disability and uh, also with disease progression. However, um, the problem is that uh, uh, we, we still not have any data about the prognostic uh, role of uh, early cortical lesion on long-term cognitive impairment. Uh, we are also aware that uh, uh, cognitive impairment is present in uh, a multiple sclerosis patient uh, since the early stage of the disease, uh, affecting up to 65-70% uh, uh, of, uh, of them, uh, affecting several different domains, uh, such as uh, uh, learning and memory, uh, information processing speed, uh, attention, and uh, executive functioning also. Um, like, uh, mm, like cortical lesions, uh, cognitive impairment is present uh, since the early stage of the disease. Um, it worsens over time. There's a worsening over, over the MS course, and uh, uh, they, are, um, they are predictive for, uh, um, for severe uh, progression, uh, for severe and clini clinical and neurological progression. Uh, and they also have a dramatic impact uh, on uh, quality of life, uh, of both uh, um, patients, but also caregivers. So it's important to monitor, to assess and monitoring cognitive impairment. Uh, however, clinicians at the moment uh, uh, still struggle to uh, predict uh, the, um, the cognitive abilities uh, and the evolution of cognitive abilities over time. Therefore, we conducted this study at University of Verona, um, including uh, enrolling uh, uh, 170 MS patients uh, that having today about 20 years of multiple sclerosis, of course. Um, MS patients underwent at the time of diagnosis uh, an MRI examination, and uh, they were followed clinically and neurologically over time. And, and at the end of the study, after 20 years, approximately, approximately 20 years, of MS, uh, they underwent uh, a, a, co a comprehensive cognitive assessment. Uh, our patients were divided based on the, the uh, cortical lesion number diagnosis and also the cognitive state of the follow up. So we were able to found uh, a homogeneous group because approximately, considering cortical lesion, approximately 40% of patients uh, had a diagnosis, uh, no cortical lesion. So they were without cortical lesions, seeable at, um, at the MRI. Uh, approximately 40% of them showed a low cortical lesion burden, so one or two cortical lesion. And approximately 40% of them showed a um, higher uh, cortical lesion burden, so three or more cortical lesions. While uh, considering cognitive status, we found that the patients were equally distributed between cognitive normal and cognitive impaired patients, so half and half. And uh, uh, in considering cognitive impaired patients, uh, uh, they were equally distributed between mildly impaired and severely impaired. So uh, what, we, what we did is the, to compare the cortical lesion number between cognitive normal and cognitive impaired patients. And we found that cognitive impaired patients uh, showed a significantly higher number of cortical lesion and diagnosis compared to cognitive normal patients. And in particular, the severely cognitive impaired patients showed the highest cortical lesion number. 
we also run a predictive model that show that uh, a higher uh, cortical lesion number of diagnosis uh, represented a risk factor for uh, developing uh, cognitive impaired follow-up. In fact, uh, um, cort cognitive impaired patients had a significantly uh, higher number um, of cortical lesions. And uh, in fact, uh, um, having a diagnosis uh, three or more cortical lesions uh, showed uh, a, a, a risk factor of was a, was a risk factor for developing cognitive impairment, in particular of uh, approximately uh, four times to have more, to four times higher, um, increase the risk of four times uh, of, of approximately four times to develop. Uh, um, cognitive impaired uh, after 20 years of, uh, of multiple sclerosis, in particular severe cognitive impairment. Um, so we can then, we concluded that, that uh, uh, cortical lesion number diagnosis uh, uh, is able to accurately discriminate between cognitive normality and cognitive impairment. And um, in particular, uh, um, this could be, this could represent uh, um, a reliable, uh, um, a simple and reliable uh, biomarker. Uh, that could uh, um, indicate uh, which kind of uh, patient uh, will develop uh, uh, cognitive impairment. And uh, um, the presence, uh, as I liked, the presence uh, of uh, cortical lesions, uh, uh, of three or more cortical lesions in particular, uh, should be considered this red flag that we are looking for, uh, since it increased the risk of approximately four times of accumulating uh, uh, severe cognitive alteration. Um, therefore, we uh, highly recommend uh, an early cortical lesion evaluation uh, at, at very per, at, 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 as soon as possible. So at, at the very beginning of the disease and diagnosis, uh, this should be conducted in, every, in each, um, each MS patient, uh, even in uh, non-specialized uh, MS center, because it's very important and uh, it gives you the possibility to know in advance uh, uh, to which kind of patient will show um, a higher, um, a higher burden of cognitive impairment, uh, and to anticipate the, the 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 developing the development of cognitive impairment, uh, and uh, so we are able to know in advance uh, which kind of um, of patient uh, um, keep which to keep which kind of patient keep monitoring in terms of cognition, and uh, we we are we are able to uh, promptly intervene uh, when uh, when when it when it's necessary to uh, some uh, sort of uh, cognitive in training or cognitive intervention or cognitive rehabilitation programs. Actually, we are trying to uh, implement this model by adding also other uh, MRI measures, such as uh, web matter lesions and uh, the volumes of uh, uh, brain volumes and different types of uh, um, the brain structure volumes uh, in order to, to uh, improve uh, the, the accuracy of the model and uh, to give also an implication uh, uh, not only on cortical lesion, but on other MRI parameters. And uh, we also have some more patients to analyze, so we would like to increase also our uh, um, our sample to to have also a higher applicability of our results.